Okay. We're back. We're live. Uh, this is uh, Marco, Mina, and me, except Marco is somewhere in the bowels of the People's Republic of China. So it, today it's uh, Mina Marita and me alone at last here on in our energy show, the first energy show of our five energy shows every week. Welcome to our energy show, Mina Marita. Hi, Jay. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Kuala. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since we've talked. <laughs> well, since I'm, Thursday. I'm talked anyway. on the radio. I got to qualify that. Talked <laughs> right. on the radio. Thank you. Because <laughs> we do talk in other circumstances. So um, I guess the the big thing, Mina, is um, you know uh, how how central, how relevant, how important was that briefing on Thursday? This was the 13th annual um, you know energy briefing by the Energy Policy Forum, of which you are an emeritus member. Um, to the legislature, uh, which, uh, you know, you, we, maybe we have some way of gauging their level of interest here in the 2017 uh, session. But there's a lot of issues out there, and I think it was very interesting that the forum looked back first to see where, where all of these initiatives had gone, because a lot of them, you know, you see a big splash when they come out, um, when somebody is advocating for them or the legislator is passing a bill, um, and then, you know, you don't hear much, and some of them actually disappear without a sound. They go sliding under the waves, uh, and, th and that's, that's an intentional metaphor. Uh, so, Mina, what, <laughs> what, what happened on Thursday? <laughs> no, you know, the see the, the such and briefings are really important, and I, and I think they're really critical for especially new members, but... Um, you know, having this look back, I think, is very important considering the times that we're in right now. And it's more than um, um, the kinds of programs that are being proposed through this legislation. We need, we need big um, system investments. Um, to help facilitate distributive energy resources. And unless we can um, focus on, uh, on, on the big infrastructure needs for grid modernization, we're not going to get very far um, in our endeavor. And what I fear is, um, you know, the cost and and social equity kinds of issues that um, are, are challenging at this time. Yeah, you are, you know your, your judgments are so refined. I mean, <coughs> you say that <coughs> Nina Marita was the chair of the Public Utilities Commission for several years, and she writes a blog called Energy Dynamics right now, and she's very well, oh, and she was in the legislature for something close to 300 years as the chair of the Energy <laughs> Committee. <laughs> Sorry, I said that. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're forgiven. <laughs> she knows all the issues, and she can appreciate them with a level of experience. And um, let me go back to say that when this um, Energy Policy Forum briefing was first uh, created, uh, I think it, it drove off something you said, and that is uh, we, we must be institutional memory. We must remember what happens. Otherwise, we will lurch from one side of the boat to the other and not have the benefit of our own experience, good, bad, or otherwise. And I think this was faithful yeah. to your comments uh, that, that actually created the program, and I think it's uh, something we always have to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and like I said, um, you know, looking back at why, you know, certain legislative issues haven't moved forward as quickly as they did is, you know, these are really um, complicated issues dealing with financing, um, administration of programs, and setting them up is taking quite a while to do. Yeah, I, mean, I had the feeling that, you know, people, people say, and it, it gets a little old sometimes, that, you know, Hawaii is way ahead of the curve, and... Hawaii is the great laboratory for the world to see, and uh, you know we've made remarkable strides. And uh, you know I'm, I'm impatient about this. I want us to make more remarkable strides. 
I want us to, you know, see our goal right up there, and I want to work every day to get there. And I'm, I'm not convinced that we're doing all that we could do. I think we get, and this is a term that I use all the time, I think we get distracted. Uh, for example, the next era, you know, experience was a distraction that cost us 19 months. Um, and I, you know, and I think it's still costing us momentum. And so we, we really have to move forward with alacrity. Uh, and that means we have yeah. to get our act together and we, we can't be hesitant. We have to take some risks. Um, and we have to always be, you know, we always have to be looking at the new technology, new concepts. Right now, I would say that we're not as much ahead, if we are, uh, of, you know, other places that are putting, that are investing in, um, you know, in clean energy. Uh, and I think your point well, is very I, well taken about I, we have to do it at the, the, the utility level. Well, I, I think, you know, I'm going to have to disagree with you about the next era um, merger being a distraction. I, I, I think it was um, a very important um, issue to be considered. And I, I believe that there were issues that came up that were distracting, but you know, in, in that case, you were talking about, you know, basically a fortune three hundred. I mean, fortune three hundred company coming in to acquire um, the Hawaiian Electric Company that may have had not only the resources but the operational capability, the planning capability to help us move forward. So I, you know, I kind of disagree with um, um, your kind of. That's why you disagree with my characterization. But we are, you and I are together on the basic principle that next era would have been a good thing for Hawaii, and I am, I am sad that it, that it was uh, rejected. Um, but let's look at what it taught us. I, I mean, in terms of the uh -huh. community, um, you know, the electorate, uh, the regulators, uh, as it is right now is that, you know, Hawaii has sort of, in dealing with the next era that way, which was not pleasant, not kind either, um, it, it, we, we kind of made a decision. And maybe it was for the right reason, maybe it wasn't. But the decision was that we're going to try to go indigenous. We're, gonna, we're not going to want uh, another buyer to come down here and buy our utility companies. Uh, we want to do it in-house. We want to do it with our own existing structures. Uh, we want to control it. Um, and so forth. I, I think that's the implicit decision that was made. And the question goes back to what you said a minute ago, and that is, can we achieve the investment, um, you know, by doing it that way? And, that, and the jury's out on that, because we haven't had remarkable investment. Um, and I think to the extent we had investment by some of the solar companies over the past few years, I think that's declining. Uh, I think the GEMS program is an abject failure. We can talk about that. Um, and, um, and, you know, the, the, the credits are not helping right now. And uh, maybe they've spent themselves. So the question is, where does the money come from going forward? If we're going to do this indigenously, if we're going to do this and meet our goals, we have to raise capital for large installations of new technology. Where's it going to come from, Mina? Yeah, exactly. You know, the... Uh you know, we've already tapped into the rate pair where, you know, I don't see any future re relief for the rate pair. You know, the taxpayer is burdened. So, yeah, you have to rely on outside um, um, investments coming into the state. And, and not only, you know, you have to rely on that, but, you know, where are you going to put the investment? Are you going to put it on the customer side of the meter? Or are you going to put it into the shared um, resource of um, a modern grid? Where do you think you know, we should and, put it as a matter of policy? I'm sorry, what was that? Where do you think we should put that investment? Where is it most needed? Where will it give us the best leverage? On the grid side or on the well, customer side? It, for me, it has to be on the grid side. And... and you know, the thing is, you cannot facilitate the customer investments unless your grid is able to handle it. So, you know, modernization of our grid is extremely
extremely important. You know, and um, and one of the things, one of the reasons why um, KIUC, I believe, is um, proceeding faster than the Hawaii Electric Company is KIUC has much more visibility on its grid than the eco company. And, so, you know, it, it's, it's advanced metering. They have smart meters. Yeah. You know, so so yeah. that gives them better visibility on the grid um, where the system operators become more comfortable um, because they have this visibility. Yes. And in, in, in taking, in, you know, taking the system farther beyond the limits they've been before. Well, suppose I gave you a billion dollars and I said, Mina, can you please invest this, uh, say in, in grid equipment or in upgrading the grid and smart meters and time of use technology and, um, you know, all that black box stuff that adjusts, um, you know, demand uh, with, um, with uh, well, demand with, uh, with a generation. And um, what, what, how would you spend your billion dollars to get us there? I think the first thing that has to happen is, you know, rollout of an, an advanced metering system for, for the eco companies. You Did know, you, I, I think that's where that's where we're really behind. You know, and, 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 and with with that kind of investment, hopefully you gain more system efficiencies, um, which, I, again, you hope can help reduce costs in operating the system. Well, on that point, um, Marco from China sent us an article that appeared, I guess, in the mainland newspaper. Um, oh, it's the New York Times, and it was entitled, just as January 14th, right over the weekend, um, a big test for big batteries. And it's about a project yeah. in Southern California which is being operated by AES. I think it's very interesting as a contractor. AES is like all over the world, but they do fossil fuel as well as clean energy. And in fact, they have a contract with Wine Electric to, to uh, deliver a certain amount of coal right here in Kapolei. Um, but this time, uh, AES is building a huge, huge um, battery storage system in Southern California because uh, of difficulties with, um, I think, natural gas. <clears throat> and this, this is going to be very competitive. And the only question is whether they can build it big enough and strong enough and resilient enough so it doesn't blow up or burn or fail, um, because you can't afford to have that. Did you see the article? What do you think? Yeah, I, you know, um, I, I read it really quickly um, when Marco sent, sent it. So, you know, a lot of people are putting their hopes in energy storage. And, you know, Energy storage can come in many different forms, but um, most people think to tend, tend to think of energy storage in the form of batteries. And, and so, um, you know, the, the experience with um, chemical batteries is not as extensive as you know, energy being stored in the form of liquid fuels or pump, pump storage, um, water storage, mm -hmm. in helping um, smooth out. Yeah, there are, there are various ways you can store. I mean, and maybe the lesson of all of this right. is that we have to have a diverse uh, array of storage mechanisms and use them all. And, uh, you know, these days yeah. with the technology and the information technology particularly, we can adjust and, you know, co coordinate all these diverse uh, methods of storage without a whole lot of difficulty using computer technology. <clears throat> so I guess I would ask you is what, what do you like um, aside from or in conjunction with or better than batteries? So, no, I, I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of hope put into batteries. And, you know, definitely w when you see, um, you know, CIUC has two um, um, distributable solar contracts, one with um, Solar City Tesla and the second new one, which was just announced last week with, with um, AES. 
and you know, pricing is really exciting. I I think the um, the levelized price for the Solar City one is around thirteen and a half cents or something, and the the one with AES is around mm -hmm. eleven cents. Mm -hmm. And that's really that's really exciting. That potential is really exciting. But I think you know, in this development, you really have to look at who takes the risk here. You know, so is the cooperative taking the risk, uh, and the cooperative members taking the risk, which I doubt. I believe all the risk is being placed on the developer to deliver that power. Which I, you know, being a cooperative member, I look at that as a really good thing. Mm -hmm. And um, but but I I think the the caution the caution here of KIDC not making the investment on their own is. Can you hear me? Okay, Jay. Yeah, sure, I can. We only have a minute. Okay, We're going to go to a break in a minute, but why don't you finish your thought? Okay. So, so anyway, the thing is, you know, it comes down to who takes the risk in this developing technology, and and so, you know, battery. Given how the discharge and everything, you know, there's, there's a not very much experience out there. Yeah. And we're getting experience. And so and hopefully we can attract new models. And one of the models that was discussed last Thursday was the model, and since, is the model of lumping, you know, lumping up the solar and the batteries together as one unit, financing them as one unit, having them operate as one unit. That's not on the utility side, of course, um, but that very model of lumping it up that way may be a model that can be used on both sides. Let's, let's take a, a short break, Mina. Mina Marita, Energy Dynamics, uh, former chair of the PUC, talking to us about uh, energy here in Hawaii. We'll be right back. Aloha, Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 in the afternoon. Do not tune in in the morning. My topic is energy efficiency. It sounds dry as heck, but it's not. We're paying $5 billion a year for imported oil. My job is to shave that, shave that, shave that down in homes and buildings while delivering better comfort, better light, better air conditioning, better everything. So if you're interested in your future, you'd better tune in to me. 3 o'clock every other Monday, code green, aloha, and thank you very much. Okay, we're back. We're live and I want to recap on the, the, the technologies that we talked about last Thursday at the Energy Policy Forum as technologies that may have not gone anywhere. Uh, one of them we mentioned already in the first part of the show is the, is the GEMS program, the securitization of uh, green energy monetization, whatever it is, um, and where you, you have a $150 million fund of money that was essentially borrowed and then you're supposed to, um, you know, lend that out to people who want to do clean energy installations, but who can't qualify for other loans. And so far, the uh, amount of money that's been lent out has been a very tiny fraction, uh, one percent or something, of the um, 150 million dollars. And after two years, it doesn't look very promising. Jeff Michelina of Blue Planet Foundation was one of the original proponents of that bill and uh, part of the committee that was supposed to flesh it out. Uh, was talking about trying to link it up with the on-bill financing um, program, which uh, is another program that has gone south. Um, and I wonder what your thoughts are about whether this is ever going to help on the customer side um, or whether we should be looking in other directions for customer financing. Well, <laughs> Jay, I, I, I'm going to take issue with, you know, the program fails. I, I think, you know, um, the situation in the landscape in Hawaii is changing extremely quickly. And so the initial programs that were developed may not have been timely enough and missed that opportunity. And, and so, you know, the, the program developers just weren't prepared to switch gears um, in, in moving forward. 
And then I think the other major issue here is continuity. You had a change in administration just when the program was being launched and, and the bond was issued. And so what it appears what appears to happen is you had an administration where this um, financing kinds of mechanisms were not a priority. And, and so again, you know, the program kind of fell to the wayside as we went through an administration change. And, you, you think it um, can be resuscitated at this point? Well, I, I think it's kind of sad that it's taken so long for um, these kinds of programs, especially after the bond has been issued, to be resuscitated. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that, that's a huge concern. Yeah. But, you know, I think overall part of the forum theme was, you know, continuity yeah. and how important continuity is. Yeah. And, and it, it, it's extremely important where we need to make these big investments um, in our energy infrastructure and who can have um, confidence in making these investments when there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Yeah, I think it creates a, a lot of, that, I mean, that was really a fundamental point I took away from the program, uh, that you cannot have uncertainty when you're going for goals, that you have to either fish or cut bait. Uh, if the program yeah. looks like it's relevant and working and has prospect and promise, then you do it, you know, uh, with, with all guns ablazing. You go out there and do it. Don't, don't take no for an answer, just do it. On the other hand, if it, it, it looks like it's failing, then cut it. Don't let it drift. You know, some of the programs we discussed uh, last Thursday have been drifting for years. I mean, for example, yeah. uh, you know, we have not put the pennies on the eyes um, of, uh, of, of, of wind and, and cable coming off Lanai. Uh, I think everybody yeah. will agree, everybody who's familiar will agree that it must be dead because nothing is happening all this time. But uh, wouldn't it be a good idea to just cut it off? or resurrect it, whatever is appropriate. Um, what, what, do you yeah. what do you think is happening with wind off the nice? It seems to me still like a good idea. I like wind. I like the, the zen of wind, if you will. Um, and I, I noticed that wind is everywhere in the world, and Hawaii's percentage of wind is actually, uh, you know, declining. Well, I, you know, the thing, I think you have to put all of these questions into context. And, and the, the, the biggest issue is the best renewable resources are on the neighbor island, but the population base is on Oahu. So when you look at it from that perspective, um, you know, having an inter-island cable may make sense. Um, you know, there are a lot of people out there who think that Oahu can reach um, the 100% goal on its own. And, of course, that's possible, but it's going to be costly, you know. And, and I think the same for the, for the neighbor islands. Yeah, we can, we can reach 100%, and we can probably do that tomorrow, but how much is it going to cost? Well, we have to make a plan where it'll cost, enough, uh, you know, it won't cost too much to break our backs. On the other hand, it is very high priority. For my money, for example, I'd, I'd rather spend it on energy uh, and mm -hmm. moving forward, you know, with, with alacrity on energy rather than on rail. Um, you know, $10 billion or $12 billion or whatever it's going to come out to on rail would be much better spent, in my opinion, than on energy, than, uh, much better spent on energy than rail. Um, so I think it's a matter of choices, and there has to be somebody in government willing to make those hard choices and priorities. And I don't have the feeling that that's happening. I think we lurch from yeah. one issue to another. Well, the thing is, yes, we have to make a lot of hard choices up there, but we also want to make good economic uh, choices based on fact and, you know, good sound reasoning. You know, and, and I think, you know... Um, uh, sometimes there's so much advocacy going on <laughs> in trying to push an ideology that we kind of lose sight on um, um, practical issues like cost, 
you know, and I, I'm one that we can reach our goals, but we have to be smart about it. Yeah. But you know, I mean, <clears throat> I'm reminded of some of the things that were said in that New York Times article. <clears throat> and, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I think, but part of it is that, um, that California knows it's taking some risks. But California has decided as a matter of priority, as a matter of, uh, you know, considering all the factors together and making a decision that it has to take those risks because the alternative uh -huh. is bleak. And I think we, we have to see that too. There's a certain amount of risk. Uh, we may not agree on this, but there's a certain amount of risk that we have to take, even big risk, if we're going to get there. Yes. It's a big project. Yeah. There are big risks, but there are also huge um, you know, risks if we don't do it. And so uh, I would put the money into the undersea cable. I would build the windmills on Lanai. Um, and I would, I would favor wind at least as one uh, diverse uh, source of renewable energy. But that, um, am I right? Do you agree with me that wind seems to be declining in Hawaii? Well, um, after I heard this uh, news article this morning about the impact on birds and bats from wind, yeah, that it looks like another black eye for wind. But when I was listening to that article on public radio this morning, or that news item on public radio this morning, it was like, wow, we don't have any context for this. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, it's, it's like, okay, we, we're losing birds, but, you know, one, one dog or one cat can go into a bird colony and wipe out the entire <laughs> bird <po> Touche. <laughs> which, which has happened. Yeah. And, you know, you, you won't hear about it, but, you know, you you hear about this take on on um, wind projects being a little larger than they anticipated um you know uh that that might be that might be it for for yeah. future wind projects i, I think what you're saying it's a matter of taking all things in perspective and uh right. you know the, the, the yes there might be some you know birds killed um, or bats but uh, the large, but you know, we try to minimize that, of course. In fact, uh, um, you know, uh, first wind had some biologists up on the top of the hill there, overlooking, uh, uh, I guess, overlooking Lahaina, where they have that facility, yeah. and they and they make every effort to protect the animals, um, and we should do right. that. On the other hand, yeah. we shouldn't stop the program because a bird gets killed. Uh, and we, you know, yeah. I, I don't know why, but people will come up with, uh, you know, arguments that are completely out of context and out of perspective in order to stop wind. I, I don't know why that is. We need it all. We need every source we can get, and we have to put, put it together with the most modern technology. And I think we've lost some of these initiatives over the years. We've lost uh, any forward motion in geothermal. Um, LNG, uh, I'm not sure where LNG is going, but... Uh, it wasn't in the PSIP, uh, at least not for now, and uh, the governor opposes it, and um, I'm not sure where that's going. But there are a lot of initiatives we've talked about, spent a lot of time, you know, discussing and trying to uh, move forward that, that haven't moved forward. And so yeah. I, think, I think it's worthwhile for us to have this continuity, as you originally suggested, and was incorporated in the program uh, briefing the legislature last week. And we did make a movie of it, you know, Amina. We have a, we have a movie of 30 minutes, uh, which we will play starting this weekend on OC16. It'll play seven times. And people can see the uh -huh. schedule in, uh, in our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Yeah. And Olella was going to broadcast the whole thing. It's in, in entirety to, to hear what everybody said about everything. And I think it was a valuable conversation. And I, I, wanna know, I want you to know that I appreciate your thoughts because they... They essentially created the concept of the program. Yeah, and and you know, um, you know, we were fortunate enough to have um, Gavin Bay from Utility Dive to come in and be the key, keynote at the Energy Policy Forum legislative briefing. But you know, later in talking with him, he he made this that point about you know you really we're really not acting on good information and facts. You know, we're moving forward on, on facts presented by, that can only back certain ideologies. 
and I, you know, in order to succeed, we got we have to move away from that, and we have to really understand that um, the electric grid is um, a really important um, public infrastructure that helps to bring equity. Um, Absolutely. It's more than just electrical generation. It's our whole right. civilization. And we have to be mindful. And we, we did a talk right. show. Uh, Sharon Moriwaki and I did a talk show uh, with Gavin, um, uh, Gavin Bade on Saturday. And we'll be uh -huh. playing that through this week on ThinkTech. Well, thank you, Mina. We're out of time. I really enjoy this quiet time with you. This, um, you know, just the two of us. And I hope we can do it again soon, Marco or not. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>